Hey everybody, it's number four in a series, dynamic speaking style. All right, so the series is choosing a top business motivational speaker. How do you do that? And this one in speaking style is pretty straightforward, but I think it's helpful to go through and articulate some of the things you should be looking at. But in the end, I'm gonna tell you that you've got this and how that works. So the dynamic speaking styles, yeah, sort of duh, right? You don't want a talking head. You don't want someone who feels professorial in the most boring way. You don't want somebody who's looking at their PowerPoint presentation, clicking through the slides that are all written out for you so your, your attendees just end up reading the slides. You want somebody who's a pro, someone who can hold the audience and hold the stage and make them feel like, mm, he's got me, I need to listen to all of this, I need to be taking notes. So let's break it down. First thing, are they telling stories? It is time for stories, people. Old school teachers or old school speakers would just get up there and kind of lecture. It just doesn't work anymore. What happens is when we hear stories, we put them, put ourselves in those stories, and we sort of become the main character. This whole process makes the the point more relevant. It makes the point more meaningful, and it makes the point more sticky. Stories work, and adults love them. There's nothing like a good old once upon a time. Let's make sure your speaker is dynamic by using sp stories. And by the way, they gotta be good stories and they gotta be told well. Do they have any experience with that? Let's talk about nonverbal communication. We know because we've seen it when it's not there. In some ways, it's easier to pick up people who don't have the ability to communicate with their body than it is to pe pick up people who are excellent at it. If people does it look stiff and act stiff, if they sound stiff, well, they are. And that is not what you want. You want a dynamic presentation style. You don't want stiff and canned and just awkward. So often when I see, when I'm at a convention and people talk, so sometimes there are people very comfortable in front of a microphone, but sometimes they're a board member or even a president. Sometimes they're an award winner and they just struggle and often it's that that telegraphing of their discomfort through their body language. So let's look at that. Do they walk on stage and own it and let people know you are in a safe place. You are gonna love being here for this 45 minutes or 75 minutes or whatever. So let's look at their nonverbal communication. How about their verbal communication? Yeah. I'm saying if they sound like the most boring professor ever, if they sound like the most boring webinar ever, and it's kind of a monotone and a dog like this, and we get going on, and now my third third point of communication is, you don't want that, right? Instead, are they using their voice as a tool, as an instrument? Are they changing volumes and changing their, are, maybe they're using voices. If they're telling a story, maybe they're using voices. What are they doing to hold people with their voice? All right, when it comes to speaking style, you want someone who's interactive. But what does that mean? I don't always mean interactive as in everyone stand up and talk to your neighbor or stand up and do a jumping jack or whatever. That is interactive, but that's not what you want, right? Sometimes interactive just means it happens in our minds. People in your audience will react to the speaker and feel like they're part of it. They're like, oh, he's talking to me. And I better answer that question in my head. So yes, you want interactivity, but don't be fooled. Sometimes it's literally getting people from your audience up on stage. I do that. That's so fun because when people have their peers up on stage, the show becomes a, about them and about you and about your organization. But sometimes, when I don't have that, I'm still interactive because I'm making sure people feel like, oh, he's talking to me. That's interactivity. Let's talk about visual aids, multimedia. PowerPoint is a thing, people. Years ago, I used to fight it. And I think that's healthy. Meaning, are you picking a speaker that is strong enough on their own that without PowerPoint, they are still killing it? That's what you want, right? But right where I am now is I want to make sure I have that skill and then I augment it with visuals. If you can show a PowerPoint that is unlike any other PowerPoint they've seen, if you're showing them slides where the audience goes, oh my gosh, I, I, I thought slides were just a headline with three bullets. This is crazy. That's what you want. 
So in my case, I'm super proud of my keynote deck. And I'll, I'll tell you specifically what I'm proud of. Taken alone, it doesn't make sense. If I were to mail you my PowerPoint deck, you would say, I don't get any of this. And that is my goal. Not to make you confused, but I want to make sure that my PowerPoint deck enhances what I'm doing with my voice and with my body, as opposed to is the presentation. Conversely, if a speaker is able to email you a PowerPoint deck and you're like, okay, I'm good, I don't need the speech, I got it. Well, then you're picking a crappy speaker. Don't do that. All right, how do we, how do you know if any of these things are true? Definitely check video. Could you please check video? And what you should be looking is, how dynamic are they? Do they sound boring? Can I imagine listening to them for 45 minutes or 90 minutes? But also, I think you ought to be looking at video from a year ago and five years ago and 10 years ago and 20 years ago. I'm super proud of the fact that I have very old video on YouTube. I'm not proud of that video. But what I think it shows for people who are willing to check is, oh, Brad has been at this a long time. No wonder he's dynamic. He's been honing his skills for a long time. And it, the final thing is I think it's totally relevant when choosing a speaker to ask him, you know, I've been told that uh, people who are dynamic are better than people that aren't. What are your thoughts on that? And just listen to them. Do they sound not dynamic on the phone or the Zoom with you in their, your conference? Do they engage with you? Do you feel like, wow, yeah, this is a fun person. I can see them totally holding my audience while talking about a business topic. Well then, that's a big hint, so listen for it. And of course, it's totally cool when you're talking to a, talking to a top speaker to say, well, I need some references. I'd like to see testimonials, testimonial videos, but also I'd like phone numbers because I'm gonna call people you've worked for recently. And maybe I'm gonna call people you worked for 10 years ago. And I'm gonna ask him, hey, is this guy dynamic or not? Can he hold an audience in a way that'll make me feel like this was the best decision ever with the most ORI for my meeting and my convention. Choosing a top business motivational speaker is not easy. It feels overwhelming, I know, but a lot of this is common sense, right? You already know. A lot of this you already get intuitively, even though you might not have the vocabulary for it. I'd say that if there's one thing from this video that you really ought to take away is ask pointed questions to your speaker. I think it's totally cool to say, are you any good and how do I know? And if your speaker can't answer that question, you've got your answer, haven't you? And it wouldn't, you know, it would never offend me to have a potential client say, I'm thinking about you, you look good online and you look good in the videos, but I don't know. I need to talk to other people and I need to hear your thoughts on this and this and this. I love it. All right, it's Brad Montgomery. If you're looking for a dynamic speaker, mm, bradmontgomery.com, come visit. Ask some tough questions. Ask me whether or not I'm dynamic. Choosing a top speaker is hard. I can help. I'd love to be your guide. Make it a great day.